Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson for beginners on the piano, we are going to look at some interesting ways to coordinate your two hands to play something very musical, very groovy, and it'll be nice if you can get your keyboards out and play along with me throughout the lesson. I'll be giving you everything in a slow to the regular speed, so it will be quite helpful if you bring your keyboards out. You can get a paper and pen as well to make a few notes. And yeah, if you're a beginner or someone who's been playing for maybe just about under a year or two or even beyond, you may find that the most common challenges faced by piano players is going to be to coordinate your two hands together. So your right hand wants to play a melody, your left hand wants to play just a chord or a, a note or two or some other pattern and it's just not happening together. So in this lesson, it's just going to be very simple, a very simple set of just three notes and your left hand is also going to do a nice set of notes. Okay, before we get cracking, it would be awesome if you could subscribe to our channel, turn on the bell icon for notifications, and if you like the lesson after having watched it, it'll be great if you could leave us a comment and tell us what you thought, and give the video a like and share. Let's get cracking. So, the first thing I want to talk about is how our hands can work together, how we can coordinate them together. So, I have two very simple ratios. I call them as piano ratios. So you can practice them pretty much like a percussion player. The first one would be one is to four. One is to four meaning you're going to play one hit in the left hand and four hits in the right hand. One is to four, left is to right. So the first collision will happen together. The left and the right hand will merge or meet together. And the right hand in the case of 1 is to 4 will be faster than the left hand. 4 times the left hand. The right hand is 4 times the left hand. Or the left hand is quarter as fast as the right hand. So they start together, follow a simple pulse. And for my left hand, I'm just going to tap here on the chest. I think it gives you a nice bass sound, doop, doop, like a kick. And the right hand, I'd like to tap on my leg or the thigh. That gives me a nice snare-ish or a treble sound. So I can do 1 is to 4 as follows. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'd encourage you to hold that 1 in the left hand so that it, on the actual piano, you're not going to slip your hand or lift your hand abruptly. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, let's do that together. You can do it with me. 1, 2, 3, 4. Move your head. You can also move your body while doing the same. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's your one is to four. One. And immediately on the piano, it translates. Let's say you take two Ds. D incidentally is here in between the twins. If you didn't know that. It's a nice note. It's very easy to find. Just here. So you go D. That's a good start, I guess. Left hand is doing the 1 is to 4, 3, 4, 1, 2, and there we have it. Your hands are coordinating together, pretty much like a drummer or a percussion player. 3, back to the body, 3, 4. If you don't want to do it on the body, you can even do it on a table. I just prefer the body because the body has different resonances at different points. So you get low frequencies somewhere, you get high frequencies somewhere else. One, two, you can speed it up also as you feel. Try to count, try to always move your head. Three, four, one. Okay, so that's one is to four. Let's now look at the other ratio which I have for this lesson. Four is to one. So that would be... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The left hand is doing four versus the right hand's one. One, two, do it with me. Four. One, two, three, four. You could also tap a table. One, two, three. That's four is to one. Or you can take a note D on the piano and do your four is to one. Like I said, D is quite a nice note to begin with. Two, three, four. One, two, three. 
Okay, so those are about our two ratios. One is to four, four is to one. Another interesting thing or an important thing to remember as a newcomer are scale degrees. So the way I'm proposing you learn your scale degrees is you build the scale and remember each degree or each note of the scale with a certain name. Now in India, we usually assign the first degree to the word or to the syllable sa. So D would be your sa of the D major scale, which I'm eventually going to build. So sa is D, E will be re, G, the third note, F sharp, G, G, the fourth note, we call it ma in Indian swaras. The fifth note, pa, we call it pa in Indian music. Then the sixth note, B, we say dha, dha. Then the seventh note, ni, C sharp on the piano, ni, and then the octave. Sa. You don't have to play it up and down at the moment. It's just good to know because I would like you to sing that. So, sa, re, ga, ma, pa. So, a simple thing you can do with me. Put your thumb on D. Index on E, middle on F sharp, ring on G, pinky on A. I hope you know the notes on your piano keyboard. If you are unaware of that, don't worry. You can head over to our Nathaniel School channel, nathanielschool.com and you have members only content in and we have a specific plan or package which we've compiled called the Everything for Life plan. So you'll get all my members only lessons the reason why we put it in in that area is because it's structured it's part by part and uh, level by level so you can start knowing absolutely nothing on the piano and you can definitely get to some place really well so uh, head over to nathanielschool.com probably after the lesson to, if you're wanting a more structured form of learning the piano so for now d e f sharp G, A, we can keep that with our five fingers and sing along. You can either go D, E, F sharp, G, A, A, G, F sharp, E, D. It's a bit annoying to sing, so I like the Indian Swara method where we say Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Pa, Ma, Ga, Re, Sa. Sing along with me. Sa re ga ma pa pa ma ga re sa. One more time. Sa re ga ma pa pa ma ga re sa. You could also do this in the left hand, but what you could also do is just play a steady sa while this happens in the right hand. So sa re ga ma pa. Then again D. And whenever I'm playing chord roots in the left hand, I like to play them as root with the octave. That could be with the pinky on the root and the octave with my thumb. One more time. So those are all the ingredients we are going to use, the notes of the D major scale. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D, D, C sharp, B, A, G, F sharp, B, D. We are going to use those notes. And the last thing I want to talk about before I give you the melody for our study is the value of notes or the durations of notes. Some notes last short, some notes last long. So in music, we use symbols, especially in the Western music culture or the notation, staff notation culture, if you will. We have a symbol for everything. So if you have a whole note, which is an oval or an egg looking thing, that means a note which lasts for four counts. Two, three, four. One, so you play it and hold it for four counts. One, two, three, four. You could also have a half note which lasts for two counts. One, two, one, two. You could either say one, two, or if the time signature is four by four, you go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
You could also do a quarter note, also known as a crotchet, which lasts for one count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or you could dot the minim or dot the half note, and you get a note which lasts for three beats or three counts. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three. One in a three by four, this would encounter or take up the whole bar. But in a four by four, you can do things like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So using these four symbols, the whole note or the oval shape, semi-brief, the minim, the dotted minim, and the crotchet or the quarter note, you can build a lot of rhythm patterns. And I have just chosen. A very simple set of notes in the right hand with just one rhythm pattern in the right hand. So it's just going to be crotchets, while the left hand is going to do some of the fancy stuff. So we are going to encounter these four objects or these four note values or symbols for representing note duration. And we are going to build some nice music moving forward. So that was just to prepare ourselves for the actual. Job at hand. So let's now move forward, and there are some notes which you might find useful. You can find it on our Patreon page. Pretty much all the notes you're seeing live in this lesson while watching it. If you want a downloadable copy with all my handwritten notation, check it out there on Patreon, and also on Patreon for. Different subscriptions. The base one being five dollars, you'll get all my handwritten notes for pretty much everything I will ever do on YouTube, and even the stuff we've done ever since we launched the Patreon channel. So five bucks a month will give you all my notation, notes, MIDI, backing tracks, a lot of other things. And if you bump it up a bit to the fifteen dollar or the thirty dollar subscription, you'll get to learn with me in person once. Twice a month during our live virtual lessons, a Q and A where you can share various doubts, ask me questions in person over an online conference call. So let's now get to the melody. I've composed two tiny pieces with the aim of having you do two technical things which are very important on the piano. One is crossing over your fingers, which are a very important tool. In fact, before I start, I would encourage you to just Do this without playing anything. Just cross it, and you'll realize the only way to cross stuff is via the thumb. The thumb goes under fingers on its way up or ascending, and the other fingers go over the thumb on the descending direction. So ascending, descending. Crossing over, we are going to learn. The other thing we are going to figure out is the stretching part. So your hand will be in a kind of a closed state, and then your hand is going to stretch out a bit more. Okay, so let's get cracking. Melody number one is. Okay, so that's a sum total of eight notes over two bars, and just. D E F sharp and then the C sharp below the root or the knee as I called it. So, sa re ga sa ni sa re ni sa. Now you may find your fingers getting jumbled up. It happens to me as well. So what you can do is maybe follow this fingering. So that's thumb, index, middle, thumb. Now cross over. You can cross your middle finger. that would work fine middle back to the thumb which is always on d but now the problem is you you don't have a finger there to go down you're kind of trapped so that's why i like this little drill wherein you go d e f sharp d index finger index move away your thumb put your middle finger on d d e c sharp and then bring back your thumb to recycle the drill so let's do that very slowly together 1 2 3 play d e f sharp d index c sharp d e c sharp again d e f sharp d c sharp d e with swaras sa re ga 
so when you do ni sa re ni you're going to end up doing index middle ring index and then back to thumb sa re ga sa ni sa re ni sa re ga sa ni sa re ni sa at any level on the piano whenever you're practicing something melodic i would always encourage you to sing as you play or real time with the piano you need to sing or vice versa so sa re ga sa ni sa re ni sa see sometimes i do that mistake so i like to keep correcting myself sa re ga sa and then not the middle the index ni sa re ni there are some type cases where you have to cross the middle but in this case i think the index finger crossing works better sa re ga sa ni sa re ni sa re ga sa ni sa re ni sa now while that is happening in crotchets 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 I would encourage you to play semi breves or whole notes in the left hand that will amount to a 1 is to 4 hand ratio and the notes I have for you in bar 1 I would like you to play D and in bar 2 I would like you to play the the A one more time be arguing which a should i play should i play the lower one or should i play the higher one you can play either and that would be good practice so maybe start on the low d d a d a d a d a d okay one more time really slow sa re ga sa ni sa re ni sa re ga sa ni sa re again la re lower d another nice tune to build from the first tune would be sa re ga pa you're going with your pinky the pinky didn't do much so far so sa re ga pa which is the high a sa re ga pa then ma ga re ga sa re ga pa not sa re ga ma it's sa re ga pa pa 5 ma ga re ga sa if you're confused with the syllables i'm singing you can just ignore it you don't have to bother they are just easy to sing otherwise i'll have to do d e f sharp a g f sharp e f sharp it's a bit of a i don't know what to say tongue twister i guess so d e yeah so i'm going going back to the swaras if you know solfege you can do it with solfege do re mi fa sol la ti but that gets a bit confusing i guess because the do is generally c as a lot of people who i've taught from uh the western parts of the world keep telling me the do is c so that confuses us in india at least at least in the subcontinent because we are rooted with the root of the scale uh, no pun intended where the root can change the root can be one of any of the 12 entities in music so in this case my world is on d i'm d is the sa or the root so second melody again sa re ga pa ma ga re ga sa re ga pa ma ga re ga sa slowly and again we can do our usual uh, d and a notes in the left hand sa re ga pa ma ga re ga sa re ga pa ma ga re ga sa re ga pa showcase both melodies again sa re ga sa ni sa re ni sa re ga sa ni sa re higher re ga pa ma ga re ga sa re ga pa ma ga re ga sa ma ma ga re ni sa you can even do that ma ga re ni sa 
let's not get too ahead of ourselves i'm getting a bit carried away by this melody so anyway the other variation for the left hand so these melodies let's just keep it fixed in the right hand the left hand variation 2 you could say first one was d a now variation 2 could be d 2 3 4 g 2 a 4 d 2 3 4 g 2 a 4 so we have the melody ma pa sa i'm doing sa ma pa d g a in the bass again if you're confused with me singing the swaras don't worry think of it as a guy just singing the notes you, instead of doing na 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 or la 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 I think is really boring. Uh, I'm just doing it with the swaras which I know. Sa re ga pa ma ga re ga or sa ma pa. I'm singing the bass. Sa ma pa, which is again a very nice challenge. May challenge people who are not beginners as well watching this, where you have to sing only the right hand while doing the left hand activity. and then sing only the left hand while also continuing to do both hands pretty much ma pa sa ma pa sa so another nice variation you could do is make the second bar have an elongated g so 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 that will be a dotted minimum Three, four, with the tune. This is where it starts getting a bit tricky. Two, so slow it down. also do your own rhythm combinations in the left hand and the uh, probably the last one i have for this lesson you can do a uh, the first bar can be fancier 1 2 3 4 1 2 hold d e f sharp a that's the next bass pattern let's try it variation could be da ga ma pa sa ga ga f sharp don't do d e f sharp a instead do d f sharp g a so like that a bit better sa re ga sa re ga sa ma sa re slightly tricky you have to think while you play one more time see how this sounds with uh, melody number 2 melody let's see how this sounds with phrase number 2 other note combination in the bass like i said you can try different note combos first write the rhythm down try to clap it assign it with some notes and then see how far you can take the left hand with a fi fixed pivoted right hand you can even do something like b d a that's b d in the bass a about five variations in the bass first we do only semi breves then we do semi brief minims then you do one minim and two crotchets and then follow it with a semi brief 
variation on that. Two, three, four, one, two. Lastly, you can do two minims as B D A. guys so let's just have a quick recap we've looked at two very simple melodic fragments with some proper fingering then second melody your pinky then we've looked at two different uh, or five different uh, ways of accompanying that melody in the left hand using simple note value ingredients built with whole notes half notes dotted half notes and quarter notes also known as crotchets before that we looked at interacting our two hands with the two ratio options 1 is to 4 4 is to 1 We also looked at how we design or build scale degrees using swaras. So I hope this lesson gives you a lot of work over the week or the weeks or month, however long you want to take of your practice. And uh, do stay tuned to our channel for a lot more lessons coming your way. A great way to do so is to actually stay tuned. That happens by hitting that subscribe button. turning on the bell and if you like the lesson there's a like button please press that now if possible and do leave us a comment with anything you'd like us to teach you or how you thought about the lesson and don't forget to share the lesson with all of your musician friends thanks and cheers